We've got eight seasons left to win four trophies in the Glory Hunter Challenge. After winning La Liga with Sevilla, it's time to move on. Luckily, there are some promising jobs available. We could apply for the Dortmund job, as they qualified for the Europa League this upcoming season, and we still need to win the DFB Pokal. But Marseille is promising, as we haven't yet been to France. So I'm going to apply for both of the jobs. It took three weeks to get a reply, and obviously they both came back to me on the same day, three minutes apart. As Marseille beat Dortmund by three minutes, we're gonna go and talk to them first. Now, they're worried that I can't speak French. Est-ce que je peux enlever la veste? At this point, I'm fluent in four languages, so I told them not to worry about it. They then questioned me about being in the running for the Dortmund job, but I played it coy and told them I'm just exploring my options. Turns out, former manager Patrick Vieira left on bad terms, and they want assurances that I can meet expectations so I promised them I would be able to. So now it's time to get on the other Zoom call and talk to Dortmund. They don't seem to think I'm very loyal, having managed five clubs in 12 seasons. But I tried to gaslight them to thinking that 12 seasons is a lifetime, and it's to be expected. They're also skeptical about why I want to leave Sevilla. But again, there isn't an option to explain the concept of Glory Hunter. So I told them I've taken Sevilla as far as they can go. And just like Marseille, they're questioning me as to why I'm in the running for two jobs. So again, I kept my cards close to my chest. Now we just sit back and wait. And it's Dortmund who get back to me first, offering me a job four days later, but I'm going to delay it. I think I would rather take the Marseille job. It is going to take some time to build a team capable of beating PSG in the league, and I think the more time we have to do that, the better. Hopefully, we'll also be able to win the Europa League with them, which means we can take a run at the DFB Pokal in the final few seasons. And sure enough, a day later, Marseille offer me the job. So I think logically right now, that's the one we're going to take. So let's move to the south of France. We've got three really good players. French goalkeeper Antoine Marie, Spanish centre-back Daniel Mourinho and Serbian striker Matija Popovic. However, I am open to selling one of them because the rest of the team is really quite bad and we only have 18 million to spend. Interestingly, centre-mid Daniel Mourinho does want to leave, so we might try and force a move. I asked his agent if he knew of anyone keen on buying him and he said Newcastle wants him and will pay 79 million. So I asked him to invite them to make a bid. And true to their words, they did bid 79 million, which of course we accepted. Although some idiot did put in his contract that he'd get 15% of any sale. But it still leaves us with 82 million to spend. His replacement was signed for just 5.25 million from Yokohama Marinos in Japan. Ryo Ahsoka looks pretty handy. He was one of a raft of transfers that we made. The best being Vaclav Gabriel for £22 million from Saudi side to Mac. But he won't be playing in our first game of the season because he was seen leaving a bar in the early hours of the morning on game day, which is an automatic team suspension. But we didn't need him as Matija Popovic scored a brace in a 5-0 win over Lyon. Last season, Marseille finished ninth in the table, so our target is to finish in the top seven. But beating Leon 5-0 might mean we need to be aiming for the top four instead. When Vaclav Gabriel was back in the squad against Lille, he scored both of our goals to win the match 2-1 and collect all three points. But really impressively, he managed to score the only goal of the game in a 1-0 win over PSG. Maybe we should be looking at the title this season. But a draw with Monaco, a 3-2 loss away at Lens, and a terrible 2-1 defeat at Strasbourg leaves us just third in the table, already eight points behind PSG, who have won every single game this season, apart from the one against us. But Matija Popovic wasn't going to let us lose more ground. He scored a brilliant hat-trick in a 4-0 win against Lahav at home. But not wanting to be outdone, Vaclav Gabriel scored a brace in a comprehensive 5-1 victory over Nice, which wasn't very Nice for them. However, Popovic wants to be the top dog, so he scored all four of our goals as we swept aside Bordeaux. We're enjoying our football as if it was a fine wine from the vineyards of Bordeaux. That was before we lost to PSG, 
and Montpellier, which keeps us third in the table, 10 points behind the Parisians. But we're in a very tight European battle. Being transparent, I would love it if we dropped out of the top four and finished in fifth place to qualify for the Europa League, which of course we still need to win. So I don't mind if we end up losing a few games. And lose a few games we did. Lens, Toulouse, Nice, and Monaco all beat us. But annoyingly, it wasn't enough, as we finished the season in fourth place, qualifying for the Champions League. I must be the only manager ever to be upset that we've qualified for the Champions League. But we also need to win the Coupe de France, and we could do that this season. To save a long explanation, we'd had a very kind draw, and thanks to a few wins on penalties, we'd made it to the final. But Monaco are a step up from us, so winning this game will be tough. And 30 minutes in, they had the first chance. Crowding the centre of our half, they worked the ball into the penalty area, but luckily Marie was on hand to make the save. And from the resulting corner, Ahsoka stopped the ball on the goal line to keep the scores level. But we had a chance to score before half time, but the set piece routine just didn't quite work out. So at the break, we're drawing nil nil. The second half was looking like it was going to go by without a single highlight and we'd have to go to extra time. But in the 91st minute, we had a corner which was cleared. But the ball was recycled back into the area where a scramble in the six yard box ended up with the ball in the back of the net. In the final seconds of the game, against the run of play, we'd won the Coupe de France for our first trophy with Marseille. But the cup is one thing. Overthrowing PSG for the league untitle is another. Popovic was the league's top scorer of his season, and Vaclav actually missed a lot of game time with injuries, but he had a very good goals to game ratio, and left winger Sotoshek had a great season. So if we can build around these three players for next year, I think we've got a great chance of making a push for the title. The issue is we only have three million pounds in the bank and a transfer budget of eight million. So to raise funds, we sold as many second team players and dead wood as we could, as well as one of our better players for a fee that could rise to 54 million. But we only spent 36 million pounds due to our overall poor finances. Our best transfer was actually Rafael Henriquez on a free transfer to Marshall our midfield. And I also turned down an approach from Barcelona to become their manager. Spain is complete and they're in the Champions League, so they're not really much use to us. Rafael Henriquez scored a stunning free kick on his debut as we beat Brest 4-0 on the opening day of the season. Popovic got his season going with a penalty against Lille, whilst Vaclav Gabriel got up and running in a 5-0 thrashing of St Etienne. Truth be told, we'd had a very kind start to the season as most of our opponents are in the bottom half of the table. But a convincing 2-0 win away at Monaco might suggest we have title credentials this season. We sit second in the table, only behind PSG because they've played one extra game than us and are a point ahead. But we did go top of the pile after the next match when we thrashed third place Nantes with Vaclav Gabriel scoring one and Matija Popovic scoring a brace. We then extended our lead over PSG as we welcomed them to Marseille, destroying them 3-0 and sent them back to Paris with their tails between their legs. Surely this is going to be our season. Well, we did stutter over Christmas as we drew 0-0 with Nice, 0-0 away to Lyon and suffered a shock 1-0 defeat away at Brest. But Popovic and Vaclav Gabriel got us back on track in a 3-1 win over third place Lens, which does just keep us on top of the table ahead of PSG, but they now have the game in hand on us. We're also competing in the Champions League this season. We're not going to focus too much on it because we've already won the competition, but it is important to try and go far on it for the prize money. We really need to have a nice budget next season because I've pretty much sold every player I possibly could. In the grand scheme of things, our draw had been kind. The toughest opposition was probably Sevilla, who were only good because we made them good in the first place. We finished a point ahead of our former club, but a point behind another one of our former clubs, Juventus, to finish fourth in the table. We managed to squeeze past Barcelona 3-2 on aggregate in the round of 16, to set up a quarter-final against big rivals PSG. 
After drawing the first leg 1-1, the second leg was 3-3 at 90 minutes. When we scored in the 105th minute, we thought we'd won the tie, only for PSG to level the score in the 109th minute, taking us to penalties. Now, the Parisians had their first penalty saved, but we missed our second penalty, our third penalty, and crucially, our fifth penalty for the Parisians to defeat us and progress to the semi-finals. Hopefully, this isn't a sign of things to come. Well, it didn't seem like it as we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with PSG, as we both won almost every single game for the rest of the season, and crucially, we recorded big wins over rivals, like our 3-0 win against Monaco and a 3-1 win against Lyon. However, we did slip up against Toulouse and Rennes, dropping four points, which meant our game away at PSG was going to be a title decider. The Parisians took the lead, but Vaclav Gabriel pulled one back. However, in the 83rd minute, PSG scored the decisive goal, narrowly winning the match 2-1 and winning the title ahead of us by a single point. This is painful. We won 26 of our 34 games, losing just two of them, and we still can't win the title. Popovic and Gabriel had 61 goal contributions between them, but Popovic wasn't as prolific as he was last season, and at 31 years old, might be slowing down. But thanks to the Champions League, we have 81 million in the bank and 53 million to spend on transfers so it might be an idea to replace Popovic with a brand new star. And that star is Nahuan Ramirez, signed for 38 and a half million pounds from Everton. We also signed Nicolas Bacola for 19 million pounds from Racing Club in Argentina, which meant we were now over our foreign player quota by two. That means we had to sell a couple of decent players, but overall, the players we've brought in have strengthened our squad and were better than last season. Ramirez scored a brace on his debut as we beat Lille 3-0 away from home and Vaclav scored the third from the right wing. But we're going to rotate him and Popovic around to see who plays better alongside our two new Argentine attackers. And in the 7-1 win over Toulouse, Popovic scored a hat-trick, although he was moved up front later on in the game. But overall, Popovic did seem to be more clinical, scoring the only goal of the game away from home at Monaco. But new left winger Bacola decided he wanted to be our main goal scorer from the left wing, as he scored five past a St. Etienne side that had just avoided relegation last season and are doing okay this time around. But whatever they did, they just could not stop Bacola. But of course, none of our other attackers could score more goals than Ramirez who picked up a brace in a superb 5-0 win over PSG. That result put us five points ahead of the Parisians, who have already lost as many games as they did last season. Maybe this year is finally going to be our year. However, the cracks started to appear. In mid-November, we randomly capitulated the way at Rennes and lost 5-0 for our first defeat of the season. But then, Ramirez got us back to winning ways with a hat-trick against Lens the very next game, as if nothing bad had even happened. We also managed to beat Monaco 2-1, cementing ourselves as France's second best team behind PSG and their only real challengers. But in February, we inexplicably lost two games in a row. First of all to St Etienne away, and then we lost against Nice in our very own back garden. And when you're battling against PSG, you just cannot afford to lose games like that. We do have a game in hand over them, but PSG are now six points ahead of us. So we have to keep pushing, and the boys stepped up a gear. Ramirez scored in a 3-0 win of a breast, but it was the attacking midfielder, Ryo Asoka, who scored a hat-trick in an incredible 8-1 win at home against Bordeaux, which was quickly followed up by an equally impressive 6-0 win over Rennes to get revenge on them for earlier in the season. So when we took the lead against PSG in Paris, we thought this was our time. Until the 72nd minute when they equalised. Five minutes later, our former player at Sevilla Kubik went down far too easily and won them a penalty, which of course, they scored. The match was then killed off in the 92nd minute as PSG won 3-1 on the night. 
I cannot believe Kubik would go down so easily like that to win a penalty. I feel betrayed. And this affected the team as we lost another two games, despite being the better side on the night. It sees us fall seven points behind PSG with three games to go. And although we did pick up seven points in those three games, PSG picked up nine to win their 17th title in a row. Once again, we finish in second place and it feels like the Glory Hunter challenge is going all wrong. To make matters worse, we had a very poor Champions League campaign and got knocked out in the playoff round, which put us in an even worse financial position than last summer. But the board have still given us 39 million pounds to spend. Going forwards isn't an issue. We can score goals, so we need to improve our back line. As they say, defense wins championships. So for 20.5 million pounds, we signed Urkel Inner to be our new left wing back, and then we spent 26 million pounds on Roberto Rubio from Villarreal to be a segundo volante. But we do have a problem, and it's all my fault. I may have forgotten that Popovich's contract was running out. I was reminded when Monaco offered him a contract, so I quickly put one in two, but he decided to leave the club. Cannot wait for him to score the goal that's gonna win Monaco the title against us this season. We kicked off a new campaign against Nice, who took the lead at the start of the second half. But we fought back to equalize in the 78th minute and then score the winner in the 89th minute for all three points. But this season, we didn't seem to have any huge score lines. We beat Brest 1-0, traveled to Strasbourg and picked up another 1-0 win, and we even lost 1-0 away at Bordeaux, which wasn't part of the plan. But once again, we did beat PSG 3-0 at home. Verdemann sent off for two yellow cards in the 73rd minute when the scores were level at 0-0. We then scored all three of our goals in the final seven minutes of the match to collect all three points. And this was a theme for PSG. It's the worst start to a season they've had for years, meaning we might actually be going toe to toe with Monaco instead. But their level on point to those after we'd already beaten them 3-0, which I think put us on the back foot as we've dropped more points against other teams in the league. And then Monaco climbed above us in the table when we lost to Nantes. Thankfully though, we did get quickly back to winning ways, as summer signing Rubio scored in a 3-0 win over Lyon, and the other usual suspects were also in and amongst the goals, as we started to win games by larger and larger scorelines, putting ourselves back on top of the table. Importantly, we drew away at Monaco, which is a much better scoreline for us than it is for them. That's because they're chasing us down, and we've managed to open up a two-point gap and we're eight points ahead of PSG, who have completely collapsed this season. I kind of hope they do collapse this season and then sack their manager right at the end. And if we don't win the title, we can get the PSG job and basically be guaranteed the title next season. They did hold us to a draw in Paris though. And to be honest, we were lucky to get a draw against Le Havre thanks to a penalty that we scored. But they were the only four points we dropped in our next seven games winning the other five games and keeping a clean sheet in each of those victories. But Monaco had stepped up their game, only dropping two points and winning six of their last seven, putting them level on points with us. So the mission is simple. Win every single game for the rest of the season by a bigger scoreline than Monaco and we win the title. So we started off with a 3-1 victory over Rennes with Ahsoka and Henriquez on the score sheet. Vaclav Gabriel scored a beautiful chipped effort to defeat Lens away from home. Backup winger Kevin Germany, who's actually French, then scored a hat-trick at home as we beat bottom of the table Reims 5-0. But Nimes scored a penalty early on in our match against them. We then had to rely on both of our summer signings to score very late in the game to get back in control and eventually win the match 2-1. And arguably, we got very lucky against Toulouse, as two heavy deflections helped the ball into the back of the net to win the match 2-1. But if we hadn't won it, it would have been a huge FMing. So we'd done our jobs, we'd won five games in a row, and we've got one left to play. The issue is, Monaco have matched us, also winning five games, meaning we head into the final day of the season level on points. As long as we win, and Monaco don't better our scoreline by three or more goals, 
the title will be ours. Luckily, we had the perfect start to the game, as Boulay's throw was cleared back to him, but his resulting cross found Bacola at the far post, who headed us in front. Seven minutes later, and we thought we'd doubled our lead. The initial corner wasn't great, but the ball was laid off to Ahsoka, who shot narrowly missed. Moments later, Boulay thought he'd have a go himself, racing down the wing, driving into the area, but flashing his effort across the face of goal. Brest really had to get some possession and build some confidence, which is what they were doing, until their keeper passed the ball into the feet of Ahsoka, who found Ramirez, who was never going to miss an opportunity like that. And 29 minutes into the game, the result was looking inevitable, as once again Boulay raced down the wing, put in an excellent cross to the far post, for Bercola to head home for his second. Half time and we're 3-0 up, whilst Monaco are currently winning 2-0. If we don't score any more goals, Monaco need to beat Strasbourg by 6 goals to win the title. But Boulay was looking for a hat-trick of assists for Bacola, and the duo combined once again, but this time they just missed the target. In the end though, it was Bacola doing the assisting, as his corner was headed home at the far post, and with 25 minutes to go, our fans started celebrating. Especially when Brest went down to 10 men for receiving two yellow cards. Bacola was then able to complete his hat-trick as his corner was recycled back to him and he blasted in from close range. Brest did have one highlight in the game, a free kick was headed just wide of the post with 10 minutes to go, but despite having the game completely won, we were still looking for more, and in the 90th minute, Vaclav Gabriel put through Ramirez, who made it 6 on the night, and finally secured us the league untitled ahead of Monaco on goal difference, completing the French leg of the journey. To be fair, I think we were very lucky that PSG had their worst points tally since 2011, but the 85 points that we did pick up would have won us the title in each of the last two seasons. And we were also lucky that Monaco didn't realise how good Popovic was and only played him as a squad player. Had he scored as many goals as he did for us, it might have been a different story. Now we have four seasons left to win the DFB Pokal and Europa League but none of the teams with jobs available right now are competing in either of those competitions. So now we're in a real race against time to complete the Glory Hunter Challenge. We've got four seasons left to win two trophies. Do you reckon we can do it?